Welcome back to On the Trail to Skull Hill. As we, in the season of Lent, fix our eyes on the cross, today we look at Jesus as King. And the moment of his inauguration is one that is quite shocking. You see, today we're going to explore the upside down kingdom. Let's read from Mark chapter 15. The soldiers took Jesus into the courtyard of the governor's headquarters, called the Praetorium, and called out the entire regiment. They dressed him in a purple robe, and they wove thorn branches into a crown and put it on his head. Then they saluted him and taunted, Hail, King of the Jews! And they struck him on the head with a reed stick, spit on him, and dropped to their knees in mock worship. When they were finally tired of mocking him, they took off the purple robe and put his own clothes on him again. Then they led him away to be crucified. A passerby named Simon, who was from Cyrene, was coming in from the countryside just then, and the soldiers forced him to carry Jesus' cross. Simon was the father of Alexander and Rufus, and they brought Jesus to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull. They offered him wine, drugged with myrrh, but he refused it. Then the soldiers nailed him to the cross. They divided his clothes and threw dice to decide who would get each piece. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. A sign announced the charge against him. It read, The King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. The people passing by shouted abuse, shaking their heads in mockery. Ha! Look at you now, they yelled. You were going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Well then, save yourself and come down from the cross. The leading priests and teachers of religious law also mocked Jesus. He saved others, they scoffed, but he can't save himself. Let this Messiah, this King of Israel, come down from the cross so we can see it and believe him. Even the men who were crucified with Jesus ridiculed him. So this is the moment of Jesus' inauguration. This is his reveal as the king. How are we to understand this? How could it be that Jesus shows himself as king on the cross? If you notice, Mark takes quite a lot of painstaking detail to describe what the Roman soldiers did to Jesus before he arrived and the level of mockery at which they aimed at him. And it's all imagery related to something called the Roman triumph. I'm indebted to Sharon Dowd for this observation. She has an excellent commentary about reading Mark. But here's the thing. The Jews had expectations for Jesus, right? We've been talking about Passover. We've talked about all of these hopes and and this this blend of, of expectations that kind of met at the cross. And now we're going to look at some of the Gentile, the pagan, the Roman expectations. Believe it or not, God was communicating not just to the Jews about this moment on the cross. He was communicating to the Greeks, to the world. So the Roman triumph is this really interesting motif. For Romans to be crowned emperor, which was, in their view, a divine title, the emperors were kind of like god kings, they would be clothed in purple, they would be crowned, they would be led up to a hill, and usually a prominent hill, a a hill that connoted that, that you're the head of the state, and you know, sometimes there would be uh, libations, like this fancy drink, this uh, wine with myrrh. It was a, a beverage really reserved for, for the, the upper, upper class. And then there would be some sort of sacrifice that was made. Um, and this hero king who would, would, would be so bold as to lay his life down for the nation would be crowned God. And so the Roman triumph is this really interesting... Uh, cultural practice that the the Greco-Romans had at this time that would have essentially said that this king is actually a god. And it's exactly the things we find the soldiers doing. Ironically, they're doing it 
to mock him. Did you notice all the things they did? So this is a little preview of a kind of thread that we're going to explore in an upcoming series called Myth and Mission, where we're going to try to understand some of the cultural stories, expectations, practices of the nations around Israel to see how God was communicating not just to the Israelites, but to people around the world about who he was. Do, do you get this? The, the Roman soldiers are going out of their way. They wouldn't have had purple cloth. It would have been something that only royalty would have had access to. So they are going out of their way to mock Jesus through the Roman triumph motif. They're dressing him up, mocking him for the claims that he's made or that his, uh, his followers have made about him, that he is indeed this, this God king. And they're doing it out of mockery. They're doing it because they don't believe he's that. But what they're actually communicating, if you're watching from the outside and you're one of these Romans who are witnessing the death of Jesus, there's something God is communicating. He indeed is the God King and this is his coronation, the moment of his inauguration. This is the emperor of the upside down kingdom, the God King, Jesus. So Sharon Dowd makes this observation, but all of this humiliation reveals to those who have eyes to see the truth about Jesus according to Mark's gospel. He is the divine warrior king, and this is the moment of his triumph. Here the king gives his life as a ransom for the welfare of his people. Here he saves others by refusing to save himself. So even in the pagan expectation of what an ideal God King looks like at the cross in these moments of mockery, we find Jesus is actually making himself known to the nations. He is the King. So let's let the imagery of this mockery of Jesus, this ironic mockery of Jesus, that rings of truth. He is the God King. He is the emperor of the upside down kingdom. This is his moment of triumph on the cross. As we think about that image, let us go to God in prayer and spiritual formation, asking God to shape us. This is a mystery, is it not? That this is what the moment of triumph looks like. Jesus hanging on a cross mocked by the world. And yet this is the moment of his inauguration, showing us what his kingdom looks like. So let's go to spiritual practice. Let's do another exercise in Visio Divina. Find a cross to meditate on. Repeat this meditative prayer aloud. Jesus is Lord. Approach God in a prayer of adoration. While the Romans around Jesus were mocking him in kneeling and worshiping and crowning him, may we do so sincerely crowning him the king of our hearts, the king of our lives, indeed the king of the universe. Let us kneel and worship to him. And so for some discussion and exploration, in light of the cross, how does Jesus change your definition of success? Is this really what a king's triumph looks like? If this is what our king's triumph looks like, how does that shape? our spirituality, our view of God, our view of others, our view of ourselves. Discuss or journal about how our lives may mirror King Jesus's. If we are his subjects, how can we follow him more deeply? If Jesus is king, how are we to live out his kingdom here and now? So let the image of the cross of Jesus being crowned king pervade our hearts and shape us in this Lenten season and redefine our view of triumph. Tell kingdom come. Godspeed.